From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is the purser, Mr. Dollar. Oh, I was just about to call you. Oh? Better send a steward to my stateroom to put it back together. What happened? Somebody just tore it apart. But why? Oh, looking for something, I guess. The diamond? But why would they think you'd have it? Well, somebody's got me pegged wrong. Well, what's on your mind? A cablegram was sent to Cape Town about an hour ago addressed to Julio Biak. Julio? Yes, isn't he the man who's being held on suspicion of murdering Andrew Forbes? Yeah, but the news hasn't been released, and obviously whoever sent the cablegram isn't aware of it. What did it say? Contact me, usual place, Dakar. Who signed it? Well, the name was Corner. I checked the passenger list, but there's no such name. A steward delivered the message to the radio room. I've sent for him. He should be able to tell us who sent it. Nice work, purser. Could be you just helped me wind up this case. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location at sea, en route Cape Town to Dakar. To the Home Office, Tri-Eastern Indemnity Associates. Assignment, the star of Cape Town Matter. Expense account continued. Item 10, $10. A token of appreciation to the purser for furnishing me the one good lead I've had in this deal. A cablegram to Julio Biak, who is being held in Cape Town right now as Andrew Forbes' probable killer. But Forbes' diamond, the star of Cape Town, $150,000 worth, was still missing. The cablegram indicated that Julio hadn't been working alone on the deal. Whoever sent it was aboard ship and either had the diamond or was looking for it. Before long, I'd know who that someone was. I started for the purser's office. Mr. Dollar. Huh? Oh, Helen. I'd like to talk to you. Well, now, that's a switch. What do you mean? Ever since I got aboard this ship, I've been trying to talk to you, but you weren't having any. I don't know what this is all about, but you've gone too far, Mr. Dollar. Come again? Don't try to pretend. When I found my room all torn up just now, I realized... Oh, hey, wait a minute. Your room's been torn up, too? What do you mean by two? Mine got the same treatment a while ago. I don't understand. I thought it was you who... Look, Helen, I think you and I had better have a little talk right now. I steered it to the bar. Expense account item eleven five dollars Drinks. I still couldn't figure out which team she was playing on. But I had to find out. And this was the best way I could think of. May I have a cigarette, please? Oh, sure. Here. Thanks. I've been so confused, Mr. Dollar. Johnny. Johnny. Confused about what, Helen? Everything. It's all happened so fast. And then when I realized that somebody was watching me and following me... Look, I think you'd better start from the top. I suppose so. Maybe it'll make sense to you. I hadn't really known Andy Forbes very long. Longer than I had. That party he gave, it was so strange. All those people I didn't know. I mean, well, I guess it took me a little while to realize he was interested in quite a few people. Sheila? I feel sorry for Sheila. I guess she's pretty bitter about everything. But I didn't do anything to encourage Andy, and I didn't realize he was serious about me until the night of the party. And then he told me he was... And he gave me... A a bottle of very expensive perfume, forever. Oh, his usual gift? I'm afraid so. I don't care. He wanted me to have it, and it's lovely perfume. I liked Andy. He was completely irresponsible, but in his own strange way, he was nice. So? When they told me the next morning that he'd been killed during the night, I couldn't believe it. And then when the diamond was missing... Yeah? His attitude about the diamond was very strange. How do you mean? He seemed to regard it as an an inexpensive trinket. He he was so careless with it. Oh, you're telling me. That's why I was sent down to Cape Town, to try and talk him into being more sensible with it. But, Helen, you said something about being watched or followed. Yes. When I left Andy's house that night, I felt that somebody was watching me. And later I knew somebody had been in my hotel room and now my stateroom torn apart... What does it all mean? That's a good question. One more thing. Yes? 
You decided to make this trip rather suddenly, didn't you? I wanted to get away from Cape Town. Miss Forbes was kind enough to offer me a job as her traveling companion for the trip, so I took it. Do you like working for her? Yes. She's really a very nice person, perhaps a little on the dignified side. Yeah. She's... I'm pretty concerned over the Forbes name. Wouldn't you be, after all that's happened? Maybe. Oh, Johnny, I've got to be getting back and see if she needs anything, but thanks. For what? Talking to you has made me feel a lot better somehow. Good, good. It's uh, been a big help to me, too. How so? Oh, makes things easier for tonight. They're having a dance. And I've been figuring how to go about asking you. No, dear, there isn't a thing I need at the moment. Then if you don't mind, I'll go to my stateroom and change. Of course, Helen. See you tonight, Johnny. Right. Well, you two seem to be getting along pretty well now. Yeah, I guess so. I'm glad. I'm sure you realize by now that Helen couldn't possibly be involved in the murder or the diamond theft. I, uh, hope not. You are a very suspicious man, Mr. Dollar. It's part of my job, Miss Forbes. I still don't have any idea who's got your brother's diamond, and if I don't find out before we get to Dakar tomorrow, the chances are I never will. I don't see how you can be so sure the star of Cape Town is aboard this ship. I wasn't sure until today that cablegram convinced me. Cablegram? Yeah, it was addressed to Julio Biak in Cape Town. Biak? Isn't he the one who's under arrest back there? That's right. He was posing as a bartender at your brother's party. We think he's the killer. But apparently whoever sent him the cablegram was working with him and doesn't know he's been arrested. Well, I hope you can clear it up, Mr. Dollar, so that all this publicity will die down. It's been terribly trying. Yes, I imagine it has. I know Helen's felt the strain, too. She's been so nervous lately. Oh, if... If what? No, oh, I was just thinking. If only Andrew had met someone like Helen sooner, perhaps none of this would have happened. Maybe not. Had I known she was coming to the party, I don't suppose I'd have tried to talk Andrew out of giving it. She's been the one bright ray in all of this. No, if only. But regrets are so futile. She looked old and tired and lonely. Sure, maybe she was too worried about the dignity of the Forbes name, but well, I could see now it was about the only thing she'd had all these years. And with a brother who'd kept tossing the name around like a cheap toy, Oh, I quit looking at the picture. It wasn't very pretty. Anyway, I had another picture in my mind. Helen. I couldn't quite figure her. Everything she told me could be the truth. Or it could be just one big lie. And there was something else bothering me about the whole deal. Something I couldn't quite put my finger on. A piece that didn't fit. A, a discord in the tune. But Helen kept pushing everything else out of my mind. And the feeling didn't change any that night. We danced, and then we went out on the deck. But all the while, one of my stock Confucianisms kept gnawing away at me. He who gets too interested in suspects is building up to king-size letdown. It's beautiful out here. Ah. The moon and the sea and the ship sliding low. It almost doesn't seem real. I know. I almost wish it could go on this way forever. No people, no places. <laughs> There's just one thing wrong, though. What? That routine doesn't work for very long. I know. Johnny. Hmm? Is there something wrong? Why? He seems so far away, so preoccupied. Well, just uh, thinking about a lot of things, I guess. <laughs> That's not being very informative. I'm sorry, I... I guess I'm not feeling informative. It's okay. Sometimes talking isn't very important. You know, Johnny, the last few days have been a sort of nightmare for me. But tonight, everything seems so nice. Why would that be, Johnny? Oh, maybe I could make a kiss. Maybe you could. Sorry, I'm not. 
Well, say oh. now, if you two don't look just like a picture postcard. Hello, Mr. Stacy. Stacy. Yes, sir, I tell you, if they could put a picture of what I saw a second ago on all their travel folders, they'd double their business. <laughs> How nice for them. You want us to run through it again for the proper camera angle? Johnny. Oh, come on now, partner. Can't you take a little joshing? Oh, I'll try, partner. The reason I've been looking for you two, we get into day car in the morning. Yes, I know. And you can have a barrel of fun in that town. So you've told. What do you say we set up a little party? I can show you some places you won't believe. It sounds like fun. How about a dollar? Yeah. You can count me in, Stacy. Good. I'll see you in the morning then, bright and early. <laughs> he means well, Johnny. Uh, maybe. You don't sound very convinced. I don't know. Half of my job has always been sizing up people. Suddenly, I seem to have lost my touch. Meaning me? I uh, didn't say that. If it's any help in sizing me up, what happened a moment ago? I meant that, Johnny. Mr. Dollar. What? Oh. Oh, excuse me a minute. Sure. Be right back. Yeah, what is it, Percy? That steward I was telling you about, Mr. Dollar? The one who delivered the message for Cape Town to the radio room? Where is he? That's just it. I don't know. You what? I can't understand it. I've looked everywhere. I'm worried. That's not good. I was counting on him to tell me who sent that message to Julio Biak. Whoever did is probably working with Biak and could have the diamond. Uh, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Dollar. I'll keep looking and let you know the minute I find him. I turned back toward Helen, but she was nowhere in sight. I started along the deck to see if she... Oh! Oh, John! Johnny! What happened? What's the matter? I was walking along the deck. As I passed the lifeboat, somebody stepped out from behind it and grabbed at me. Who was it? I couldn't see. Well, come on, let's take a look. He ran away when I screamed. How? Oh. I see. So there I was again. Was she lying or telling the truth? I took her to a stateroom and told her to lock herself in for the night. Then I went back to deck and tried for the umpteenth time to put the pieces together. But I didn't have long. Suddenly everything was noise and confusion. Almost by the time I got to the stern, the ship was circling, lowering a boat. Twenty minutes later, they hoisted a body aboard. He was wearing a steward's uniform, and one look at the purse had told me which steward it was. Yeah, my one good lead, gone. Now, here's our star to tell you about the final episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, I finally figure out the deal, only to find that my opponent is holding all the aces. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Thank you.